Welcome to Take Charge of Your Money. My name is Jason Horiuchi. I'm an Education Specialist with the Hawaii Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs Division of Consumer Advocacy. Our office primarily represents consumers as a whole before the Public Utilities Commission. Issues related to the electric utilities fall under the Commission's purview, which is why in today's lesson, we'll look at ways to save you energy and money at home and help reduce your electric bill. Some of these tips may be things you've already done or some you might wish that you've done sooner. Hopefully, we'll be able to provide you with some useful tips that you can incorporate immediately. And of course, please share them with family, friends, neighbors, and other people you know. You'll want to have somewhat of a better understanding of your energy usage to see where you can cut back. Learn what things are eating up more electricity than needed, and then try to curb that usage. Using less will mean having to pay less when that bill comes. There are a lot of rebate opportunities out there as well for upfront savings, so we will go over those in this lesson. I'll make sure to post links to sources for you to go back to for more information later, or you can contact our office. Let's talk about the rebates and credits first, since that offers the biggest upfront cash savings. One quick note to mention, Kauai viewers are part of the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative, so they will have a different set of offerings through KIUC. Hawaiian Electric, Maui Electric, and Hawaii Electric Light Company customers must apply for rebates through a third party appointed by the Public Utilities Commission. The third party, called Hawaii Energy, is not affiliated with the Hawaiian Electric companies. I'll go over what I can in the limited amount of time, but please feel free to research more on your own for more offerings that I skipped or may have been updated since the recording of this program. Typically, one of, if not the largest, energy hog in a household is the water heater. It's estimated that families can save an average of $600 a year on their electric bill just by switching to solar water heaters from an electric one. This is why making the switch is always one of the top recommendations. Even if you live in an area that is too saturated to accept photovoltaic panels, you can still install a solar water heating system. Both KIUC and Hawaii Energy offer $1,000 rebates for the purchase and installation of a solar water heating system through a qualifying contractor. You may also be able to take advantage of state and federal tax credits to really bring down the cost and make them affordable. There are also special low or no interest loan programs set up for solar water heating. For households with only one or two people, it may be more cost effective to use an Energy Star rated heat pump water heater. Smaller rebates are available for the purchase of approved heat pump water heaters. Rebates are also available for various Energy Star appliances. Just be sure that they meet the requirements and are purchased from a participating retailer. It's no surprise that as technology improves, machines operate more efficiently. Not only will it look better, it will likely take less energy to run the same tasks. So take advantage of rebates while replacing an older or broken appliance. On Kauai, you can receive $50 for qualifying clothes washers, refrigerators, or freezers. Hawaii Energy offers a little extra for those that trade in their old working refrigerators. Even if you do not have a new fridge, but have a second spare one in the garage eating up extra electricity, you can have Hawaii Energy come haul it away and they will pay you for it through their Rid of Fridge program. You can also get $50 rebates for trading in for a more efficient air conditioner or installing a solar attic fan. Another cheap way to cool off is with an Energy Star ceiling fan. Hawaii Energy is currently issuing $35 rebates for those. For Hawaii gas customers, the utility also has its own offerings. The largest one is the Good Energy Credit, which offers a $500 credit for replacing or installing a new gas water heater and two additional gas appliances, such as a dryer or stove. They also issue $100 credits for a single new gas appliance. Customers can also earn $100 for new customer referrals, Contact Hawaii Gas for more information about these credit opportunities. Going back to electric savings, you're also likely familiar with compact fluorescent lamps, or CFLs, and light-emitting diode, better known as LED bulbs. These are much more efficient than the traditional incandescent light bulbs. A common complaint is that these energy-saving bulbs cost more than the old-fashioned ones. So Hawaii Energy works with participating stores to provide instant rebates to lower the purchase price of CFLs and LED bulbs at checkout and encourage consumers to switch. There's a list online that shows participating retailers and also the types of bulbs that they typically carry. With advancements in technology, 
manufacturers produce bulbs of varying shapes and wattages to accommodate different types of light fixtures. Okay, now I'm sure you've all heard the saying, out of sight, out of mind. That is exactly one of the issues people believe hinder energy efficiency. You don't get to see how much energy you're using unless you go outside and look at your meter, or wait until that electric bill comes in the mail. That can change with helpful energy monitors. There are devices that display energy use in real time, so you're more aware of the consumption. The idea is that seeing how much you're using will push you to use less. Energy monitors come in different forms and prices, with plug-in models starting from between $10 to $20. More advanced in-home monitors can run up to several hundred dollars. While these monitors don't do much to lower the energy consumption of the device plugged into it, it can be eye-opening to see how much power it's drawing, even when not in use. For example, how much electricity does your modem and router use while you're away at work or asleep overnight? Cell phone chargers left in the wall still draw energy even with the phone not attached to it. If possible, unplug those items completely from the outlet, or if plugged into a power strip, simply shut off the strip. Technology has advanced with smart plugs now making their way into homes. The smart plug communicates with your computer or smartphone so you can turn off or turn on the attached device remotely. Some have built-in energy monitor features and timers. Why not set a timer to shut off the router, modem, and other devices not used during that time every night? That's one good tip to conserve energy around the house. Let's go over a few more useful energy saving tips. You might be able to save by minimizing hot water use. It's estimated that almost 90% of the energy in a load of laundry is used to heat water, so consider washing clothes with cold water instead, and also hang dry if possible. Switch to low flow shower heads. This will obviously cut down your water bill as well. If you're not sure if you already have a low flow shower head installed, you can do a simple test. Time how long it takes for your shower to fill a bucket with one gallon of water. If it takes less than 20 to 25 seconds to fill up, you could benefit from a low flow shower head. They have a flow rate of two and a half gallons per minute or less. Also check your water heater's thermostat to see if it can be lowered to save energy. The Department of Energy recommends that you set it to 120 degrees. The default setting on most water heaters is 140 degrees. You could also look at insulating options to retain more heat and expend less energy. Follow directions and warnings carefully as applications vary depending on the type of heater you have. If unsure, consult a professional. Another cost-saving measure is using residual heat in other appliances. If you use a clothes dryer, dry consecutive loads with the existing heat from the previous load already in there. If you're cooking with an oven, turn it off 15 minutes before it's scheduled to finish and keep the oven door closed an extra 5 minutes. Glass baking dishes also retain heat better and may allow you to reduce the cooking temperature by 25 degrees. You can also cover pots and pans to speed up cooking and match the sizes of the burners with your pot or pan. The excess heat will heat up the rest of the kitchen and make your air conditioner work harder to control the room temperature. Toaster ovens and microwave ovens also use less energy compared to using the stovetop. So if your cooking portions can be heated that way, consider that instead of the stove to save on electricity. If you're a computer user, try to take advantage of the energy saving features. Things like dimming the display at night and automatically going to sleep mode after a few minutes of inactivity. The screensavers don't really save on energy when you can go into sleep mode or shut it down completely instead. Also, don't forget to turn off other computer equipment after shutting down. As a kid, I used to always forget to turn off the speakers, monitor, and printer. I wasted my parents' hard-earned money leaving those things on all the time when they really serve no purpose with the computer off. If you can't remember to switch them off, now they make things like smart strips, which automatically cut power to plugs when it detects the device in the main plug turned off. So in other words, if you had the speakers, monitor, and printer plugged into a smart strip, once you shut down, the smart strip turns everything else off for you. Laptops consume less energy over a desktop computer if you have a choice of using one or the other. Better yet, if you have a tablet, they consume a lot less energy over computers. So if you are planning to use the computer for a simple task like browsing the internet, pick up the tablet instead. Similar to computers, lower the brightness of your TV when watching at night or in a dark room. Newer LED TVs also consume less energy than the old bulky sets. 
So if you're looking for an excuse to upgrade, consider that. Check your TV's options to see if they include energy saving modes as well. I've also started watching more TV and movies on my iPad, less commercials and less electricity than powering on the TV. Be aware of phantom loads, also referred to as energy vampires. These are devices that silently draw power when not in use or in standby mode. Things like your cell phone charger still connected when your phone is fully charged. I mentioned earlier that the plug even draws power when your phone is disconnected. Your TV and home audio systems continue to draw power when plugged in. DVRs are also notorious for sucking up energy. Again, consider unplugging them or having them connected into a power strip and turning off the strip to eliminate phantom loads. Although the DVR does need to have power to it in order to record, if you're not recording during certain hours, like overnight, cut power to it to save on electricity. Most DVRs maintain their settings during power outages, so you shouldn't have to worry about reprogramming every time you shut it off. Luckily in Hawaii, we really don't have to worry about heating during the winter months, but during the summer, we all want to crank up that AC. Try to block out as much sunlight to keep the room cooler and your AC from working harder. Similarly, keep hot objects such as a lamp away from the thermostat as it can trick it into thinking the room is warmer than it really is. Try to keep the room's doors and windows sealed tightly so the cool air stays in the room. You can also consider combining your AC with a fan to have it still feel cool with the thermostat set higher on the AC unit. Or of course, just use a fan over the AC when possible. The government's Energy Star website also has a handy home energy audit guide that you can use to evaluate what measures you can take to improve energy efficiency. This is only a brief rundown of ways to save energy. Searches on the internet will give you multiple results with long lists of other ways to save. Thank you for watching Take Charge of Your Money. I'm Jason Horiuchi. I hope you found this presentation helpful and informative.